Sure. So our big question today is one year into the Mueller investigation, is President Trump any closer to legal jeopardy himself? We'll get to our reporters in a moment, but first let's attempt to answer that question with our legal eagles. Paul Rosenzweig is a former Deputy Assistant Secretary for Policy at the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. He's also a former senior counsel for the Ken Starr investigation and a senior fellow with the R Street Institute. And Chuck Rosenberg is a former U.S. attorney and former senior FBI official. He's also an MSNBC contributor. Chuck, I never get to see you in person. Welcome to, um, welcome to New York. Well, it's a pleasure to be here with you, Kate. It's good to have you. I want to get you to try and answer that big question. After all of those headlines, just the last 24 hours, everything we've learned in the past year included, is the president himself any closer to serious legal jeopardy today than he was a year ago? Probably, because as investigations progress, as the Mueller team learns more and more, Katie, uh, anybody who was in their sights to begin with are, are probably even more so now, right? So hard for us to specifically know, but this thing isn't going away. The Mueller team keeps advancing, and it seems like the president, if we believe the reporting, is absolutely a subject of the investigation. Paul, what's your take? Well, I agree with Chuck that the president's conduct is definitely a subject of investigation. I think, though, that the one thing that you left out uh, was the reports from Mr. Giuliani's uh, conversations with Mueller that, uh, that the special counsel probably is going to follow the DOJ policy and not indict uh, a sitting president because that's DOJ policy. So I think the president's jeopardy, if you will, is much more uh, likely in the long run to be political than it is to be in the criminal arena. Do you trust that that's actually what is happening, that, uh, that Mueller would say that we would not indict the president to oh, uh, his own attorney? Oh, well, I, I, I have taken everything that Mr. Giuliani says with a grain of salt. Uh, that seems an appropriate way to approach his, his, uh, his statements. On the other hand, it is the case that the Department of Justice's policy against indicting sitting presidents is one that's now almost uh, 45 years old, goes back to the Nixon era. So, so that's not new news, and, and I do suspect uh, strongly that Mr. Mueller, an employee of the department, uh, is going to, in the end, consider himself bound by that policy, and that he'll take the opportunity to file some form of report with the department that lays out what he knows, uh, and that, but then the ultimate resolution for the president. Not, not for anybody else. The president's unique in this regard, uh, but for the president will have to be in the political arena. But there's still some argument about that. I mean, that is a question that could go to the Supreme Court if Mueller decided he did want to indict the president. Well, that's right, Kitty. I mean, Paul's right. But there's still some argument about that. I mean, that is a question that could go to the Supreme Court if Mueller decided he did want to indict the president. Well, that's right, Kitty. I mean, Paul's right. This has been the policy of the Department of Justice. However, it's never been litigated. And so it's conceivable. I don't know that it's likely, but it's conceivable. Uh, that Mueller would ask to challenge that and if Rod Rosenstein, the acting attorney general, for purposes of this investigation is amenable, they could challenge it. Is ultimately what Rudy Giuliani trying to do though, uh, trying to say that there's no reason why Robert Mueller can subpoena the president no. for, for uh, an interview because he can't indict him, indict, him, indict him so you can't subpoena someone you can't indict? I think it's too narrow a way to look at it, Katie, because you can also subpoena witnesses because they have information about other people and other crimes. We, talk, we keep talking about the president being interviewed for the president's own criminal liability. But if he knows stuff about Paul Manafort, if he knows stuff about Michael Cohn, if he knows stuff about Jared Kushner, all of that is fair game for a grand jury. So there could be lots of other reasons why the Mueller team would want to interview him. Paul, um, do you think he will end up sitting down for an interview? I think it's almost certainly the case that he will. He'll couch it as a voluntary interview at some point. He'll try very hard to narrow it in terms of scope of the questions and time, which is to, which is to his benefit. Uh, but in the end, in my own judgment, the prospect of the president refusing to speak uh, to, the, to the special counsel uh, will do him too much political damage, and he understands that. What about what Giuliani was just asserting a moment ago in, in that uh, big, long introduction we did, that, that there's nothing illegal about digging for dirt from a, a Russian source? Well, let's distinguish between something that might be a crime, and it may or may not be, and something that's a really, really, really bad idea. 
So sitting down with Russians to gather information, dirt on your political opponent is a really bad idea. And so from a counterintelligence perspective, whether or not it's a crime, Katie, this is not something we would expect from the nominee or the staff of a major party in American politics. Paul, at the very least, he waved around WikiLeaks, said he loved WikiLeaks, used it to his advantage at the end of the campaign. I think that's right, and I actually would be a little more forward-leaning than Chuck is. I think that soliciting uh, dirt from a foreign source is soliciting a thing of value from a foreign source, and the receipt of things of value from foreign sources for American campaigns is illegal. Normally that's money. Uh, normally a Russian could not contribute to Donald Trump's campaign, or Hillary Clinton's for that matter. but. Uh, uh, OPPO e research that you, you purposely seek to receive is uh, a, an, an effort to circumvent the FEC rules against foreign source uh, influence. So what do you think happens next, uh, um, Chuck? What's the, what's the next move right here for, for Mueller's team? Are we going to see an interview sooner than later, do you think? Hard to say, Katie. I mean, they're going to continue to do what they've been doing for, you know, at least a year, if not significantly longer. They're going to look through documents, they're going to read emails, they're going to subpoena records, and they're going to interview people who are willing to talk to them. And don't forget, you have two trials pending. Yeah. They need to try Paul Manafort. What about the, these um, SARS, and uh, I don't mean the, the, the sickness, I mean suspicious activity reports that disappeared from the government database. Your take is that they're probably with Robert Mueller, correct? Well, so let me just unpack that a little bit. Um, the SARS don't always, the suspicious activity reports that banks file with Hold on one second. We have Donald Trump. Uh, this is a, a conversation he's having with reporters next to Jan Stoltenberg, the, the head of NATO. 